Welcome back to Talking Transitions. Today's guests are Sean Breen and Ryan Watson, ex-professional footballer Sean and current Salford City player Ryan Watson. Sean, give us a bit of background on you, mate, and your football journey. Um, well, my football journey is probably well professional was sort of quite short. Um, I don't know what I had the one year pro. Obviously, I was at I was at Morecambe when you were a, a Shrewsbury. Um, things didn't really materialise from there with Morecambe. Um, I, I was flying in the youth team as well, like scoring goals. Like I scored the most goals. Like I think it was like third top scorer in the whole the, the country. Like um, got into the 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 resies obviously, and there was a lot of senior pros there at, at Morecambe at the time. Um, and then from there, I just sort of didn't really hit the ground running. And then come out of footy, obviously didn't get a second year pro. Like sort of bouncing around on league and stuff like that, and I just sort of fell out of love with it to be honest. Yeah, how did you deal with the transition of? Born out and then having to get a job. Um, to be honest, that was probably the easy, the easy bit because like I, I went and worked with my dad's mate. I got like an um, apprenticeship, like uh, electrician, and obviously it's hard. I think people don't realize how hard it is to work and then play footy as well. Like going like of an evening and traveling like away an hour and a half to games and stuff like that. It, it is quite hard and mentally it's hard as well as like physically. So um, I think that's probably one of the reasons why I did sort of fall out of love with it because I was thinking to myself, am I going to get back up there and stuff like that? And as everyone knows, like just to be a professional footballer, it, it's hard to do. You know what I mean? So that was sort of one of the main reasons. I think I sort of said, right, let's focus on like another career path. Yeah. That, that's how it You know, would you say in there, like obviously you was third highest goal yeah. scorer in the country. Yeah. You obviously had the ability. Yeah. Do you have regrets now that you think that you should have carried on playing and trying to... Yeah, probably, because there, there was sort of a period when I was playing semi-pro, I think. I went to Leeds or something like that, and I, I scored a few goals, and then I think someone said, like, some, someone was looking at you, and a few... Someone was looking at me in, a, like, a couple of leagues above, do you know what I mean? And, like, I sort of do regret sort of not, like, taking a step back mentally from what I was doing day to day and thinking, right, let's focus on getting back, back up there and stuff like that. But, as I say, with, with the resis, I think... There was the likes of Phil Jevons and people like that, like knocking about in the resis and, and the first team and like quite a few senior pros and like as a first year pro, it's a bit daunting, isn't it? Know what I mean? Like them sort of players, like strikers and that. And as everyone knows, as a striker, you've, you've got to be scoring goals. I mean, if you're not scoring goals, like you, you can become irrelevant. So sort of in the, in the resis, I think I scored like two goals in the season and I've come from like scoring 23 and like 26 in the, in the youth team. So it's sort of a bit like mentally, like, Training, if you like, if any of them did, like obviously Phil probably had a really good career by that point. Did yeah. any of them kind of bring you under the wing a little bit? Yeah, I mean, oh, they, they were all great and in, in training and stuff like that. You learned a lot from them and, and and stuff, but it's just it's what you do at the end of the day. Like people can teach you like everything in training, but if it gets to a, a game and you, I mean, you miss a chance or something like that. Like I always remember, like in pre-season, I think it was Lawrence Wilson, like crossed the ball, we playing derby, and like it was the first time I played in in like front of all of the fans yeah. like it was like a first team pre-season game and he's crossed the ball and I thought like all my instincts just like went instantly and I should have should have headed the ball and I went to do some like overhead kick and it, and it went wide I remember for like a few of the players like like sort of having a go like saying use your head and stuff like that and I didn't and at that point I thought like this is how cutthroat it is like that could have been like the last seconds of a league game yeah. or something like that and someone crosses the ball and you, you've lost the game or you've drew and you could go down or miss playoffs and stuff like that so I think at that point, it, it, it's hard, like mentally, I think, yeah. definitely. You know, looking back now, obviously with football, to become a footballer and then stay as a professional footballer, mm. like there is an element of luck and opportunities yeah. given to you and stuff like that that you need. Looking back now, now you're finished, where do you think that you lacked that you didn't carry on playing professionally? Um, it's, it's hard to say, really. I think... I'd, li I'd like to say getting given a chat more of yeah. a chance in when I was in the resis sort of but the manager was new Jim Bentley was was he, that was his first season he's he's not going to give like sort of kids like a, a go is he whereas and I think it, it all depends where the team is as well obviously if the mid table and you're like you're safe or whatever you're not going to make playoffs like lads are going to get like that's your bit of luck lads are going to get more of a go there so it's hard to say I think l looking back I'd say purely down to well, one of the reasons is luck because there was like six or seven sometimes like uh, senior pros there. Yeah. So that's probably why I, I reckon I, I didn't get get going. Morecambe's not renowned for bringing players through, is it really? For From the youth team, obviously there's some mm. good players who come through, but like the likes of crew and... Yeah, they're the your big ones, yeah. Chance, don't they? So Morecambe's probably 
as you say, yeah, fighting for relegation probably most seasons. Yeah, so yeah, that, definitely. That opportunity probably doesn't come around as often. Yeah, so. yeah The reason why I say luck as well is because people probably who listen or look from the outside think, oh yeah, it's got to do with luck and all that. But mm. like for me, um, when I got released from Wigan, I went on trial at Shrewsbury, mm. and um, I was only 15, 16 at the time. And I was trying to get a scholarship. And the first team manager at the time, Shrewsbury, was a guy called Gary Peters. Mm. And he wanted lads coming through who were like six foot and above. So they weren't giving YTs out to obviously small players like me. But the youth team manager, Nigel Vaughan, still speak to him now to, to this day. Like he loved me, but he said, I think that Gary Peters is going to get sacked. Mm. If he gets sacked, you'll, I'll give you a, a scholar. But I can't at the minute. Yeah. So I, at the time, I was thinking, oh, was he just like talking shit to me just to like make me feel a little bit better? So I went on my oldies and all that. Like at this time, I'm thinking, well, I'm gonna have to go to uni or something after this. Yeah. Um, it was in Tenerife with my family, and I always remember it. My dad uh, answered the call, and it was Nigel Vaughan. He said, "The first team man just being sacked. You're getting a scholarship." So luckily for me, and obviously, if he didn't get sacked, I wouldn't have got the opportunity to go to Shrewsbury. But then Shrewsbury gave me the scholarship, and then a year later, I was playing in the first team. Yeah. So there is obviously an element of luck because if that manager didn't get sucked, I wouldn't have got a scholarship. To be honest Just, with you, not many people, there's probably been things like that which have impacted your journey, your journey mm-hmm. or whatever, but not many people probably know the backstory to it. So yeah, the fact yeah. that, that youth team managers told you that information prior yeah. to it, could, could, you could go either way from that, couldn't yeah. you? Obviously, it's, as mad, it's mad what you say there about like sort of being like smaller player as well. Like I think in League Two, for someone like my size and build, I think like sort of where the manager was coming from is like, He's been up against like big, strong, you know, strikers yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. And like, I wasn't that, you know what I mean? I was like an off the shoulder, do you know what I mean? Type yeah. of striker. And I remember like, um, George Burroughs, someone like came in, um, from Chesterfield and he was my age. So I was the only like sort of striker, like, um, first year pro. And then he came in and he was like a good few inches bigger than me. He was stronger. And it's sort of after like a couple of weeks, he was straight in. Yeah. So then me, I'm thinking I'm not built for this like league. You know what I mean? Am mm. I even built for playing like footy at this level, whatever, you yeah. know what I mean? Not to like blow smoke up his ass and that, but I think he could have had a career. I always yeah. think that and say that to him. Like, mm. I think like it's tough, obviously, because when you do get set back and that, it's hard to keep going. Yeah. And, like, obviously with injuries or whatever, but genuinely think he he, he should have had a mm. career and like played played a lot more than he has done. And why do you think he hasn't? As a as a mate, obviously, it's tough in it because like when you start earning money, yeah. doing like a job, and you you've got that full time, and then that you expect to go and train yeah. part time nights and. You're giving up your weekends and you just wanted them not to like the the Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, at, at the end of the day, like, like as, as much as you, you might not want to say it, like life's about making money at the yeah. end of the day. And like what you do, do you just not work all day and then just like get ready for training of an evening or a Tuesday night, like an hour and a half away? Like you can't do that. No, there'll still be players who are in that transitional period yeah. who've come from full time. Yeah. Where they are still chasing that dream, maybe of yeah. getting back to full time. Yeah. And then they can't come to terms with going into work. As exactly. well as playing, yeah. but then obviously it, it's a catch twenty two, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. you want to give your hundred percent to football, but then obviously you might be going and doing a strenuous job or something for, yeah, for exactly. eight hours. That it must day. be so hard as well, though, when you drop down to that um, level to try and get back up again. Because oh, it's, it was, yeah, it's very hard. It must be so hard. Very hard. Yeah. I did. L- I, I went from the champ to, to the conference. Yeah, never ever got back up. Exactly. I'd love to know how many players like what 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 it is the ratio of how many yeah. do get back up there. It's, it's hard mm. to do. Mate, there's some good players playing low as well. Yeah. If you ever, like, you know, you probably all played in those preseason games when yeah. you play a team, five, six leagues. Oh, we get yeah. pumped all the time, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but then some <laughs> people are saying, up, you know, in the work yeah. gear and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then they still are playing really well against you. They always look fat, but they can, they can all run and all that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. yeah, no, there's just, as I say, there's so many fundamentals and, and factors yeah. to being successful in football. Yeah, definitely. Um, but oh. as you said, mentally at the time, maybe you wasn't equipped enough to. Yeah to take those setbacks and then push on again. Mm. Um, well, I think mental health as well in football is like a big thing. Like imagine going from like, even like earning top money and playing footy every day and then going and saying like working on a site. Like I think like that's why a lot of people probably struggle like with mental health and things like that because it is a massive transition. You know, going in the changes yeah. every day of the morning, having breakfast and things like that. The, like the difference is that is actually a bit mad. How did you find that then? Because obviously that's, you said you went to an apprenticeship as an electrician. Yeah. You start at the bottom, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, li- literally. But like, luckily I was like working with a, like a small company and it was my dad's mates. And it, it was a bit like you had that bit of banter as well, like going in, do you know what I mean? So it had that element of like, say, going in the changes a little bit. Because um, we were going in, we were having a bit of a laugh like every day and stuff. So that probably made it a, a lot easier than like some people who were going into a different industry might, might sort of find it. But you, you guys have, 
known each other for a long time, haven't you? Yeah, you grew yeah. Up together. Our, our, our parents yeah, yeah, yeah. are like good mates. Good mates, so, yeah. yeah. So moving on from your career to yours, right? Obviously yeah. still playing today. Um, I think we spoke the other day on the phone, and we, we you said that you've been kind of away from your, your hometown for a very, very long time now. Yeah. How did you handle that transition, moving away on your own in the wilderness without your like, parents kind of guiding you? Um, it's mad, really, because I, I actually moved moved out of my house when I was um, 15. I left school because I'm a, a late one in, in the year. I'm July birthday, so my scholarship started that um, in June. So I was I moved into the lodge at, like, 15. Obviously, like, it was a, it's obviously a big change, in it? Like, um, going in there, and it was just chaos. Like, obviously, as you can imagine, it was, like, 13. It was in there just... Is that at Everton? Yeah, you just, like, go down, get, like, a drink. You come back up, like, your mm. bed would just be flipped. Like, there'd be everything all up the walls, like... The best days, yeah. yeah. Like just like full balls, just like flying past your head, yeah. dots flying past your head, everything. Just like everyone's just walking about all the time. Yeah. Um. But it's good. Like obviously, and I was only there like a year because when in the youth team, I was a bit of a, like a um slow developer. Really, um, didn't really play first year scholar at all. Playing like with the sixteens, but like the sixteens was good. Like with like Ross Barkley, Hallam Hope at the time, like loads of the year up below and the year above yeah. me were like good. Like Evan have players. always had unbelievable academies, haven't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, like they were proper players. Like Mustafi was age, in there. Like, my age, yeah. every, every, a lot of the players have gone on to do big things, yeah. like, for sure. Um, Duffy, Duffy, Duffy yeah. 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 John Nolan, Nolan, he's yeah. dropped out of it now, but the team. So oh, hope, hope, hope yeah, yeah. Prem, Prem, didn't well, like, we had, yeah. had Scott and Mustafi in the youth team. Yeah. Like a few years later, he won the World Cup. That was the most <laughs> insane. Um, who's was, this? Remember the guy who played for Arsenal, centre half. He wasn't even playing, was he for user? No, he wasn't playing. So it was Toto and, and Duffy, yeah, yeah, the back, and Jay <laughs> yeah. McCartan, Jeremy Jay. Yeah, yeah. Big it's like, soldier. Yeah. Them yeah. Thing. And like Mustafi come in from Germany, obviously, yeah. like, no one knew who he was. And he's not very big, is he? Like, he wasn't very big. <clears throat> like, like at that point, yeah, like, the yeah. Prem was, like, just full of just tanks yeah, and yeah. beasts, like it is now. But obviously, like, you have to be, like, six foot four to play for Everton. <laughs> that was the maddest thing. <laughs> and Mustafi ever, was, like, six foot one, maybe. And then, obviously, just weren't playing. And then I think he signed for, like, here. Uh, Schalke was all mad. Yeah, he did. He went to Schalke. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then it, like, a few years later, won the World Cup. What the hell? He's playing for Arsenal in the Prem as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then Arsenal bought him, like, 30 mil. I can't pitch them for some reason. I don't know why. He's, like, got, like, beard. You'll know his face, yeah. Yeah, you'll know him. You'll, mm-hmm. you'll know him. Stuffy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a mad, that was a mad one. Like, yeah, his yeah. career's mad. Cause I, don't, I don't know what he's doing now. Like, I don't know where he's playing. Yeah, that's cool. But, like, the youth team was just, like, so many good players. And then Dave Watson's son was there below me, Joe. Yeah. So Dave used to come and watch, but he was the youth team manager at Wigan. So then obviously he knew where I'm playing and that. And then a few of the lads who got released from Everton who didn't get scholars went to Wigan. So like I spoke to them and that. And like obviously Dave just said, come in, come train. Obviously he went to speak to Everton. It was like, it was mad because I've been there for 11 yeah. years. Do you know what I mean? To like, no, go somewhere else other than Everton was just like crazy. How did you deal with leaving Everton? Obviously after you've been yeah. there for 11 years. I knew I knew I had to leave. So yeah. Obviously like you would just bring the players in and like I was just away and playing. Um, so I needed to go and play footy, but... It's just, it's just mad, isn't it? Like, obviously, being being there 11 years from, like, all the way through and then to, to actually leave and go to Wigan was just mad because the facilities were just, like, like we were talking yeah. for, like, chalk and cheese. Like, obviously, they're both Prem clubs, but there's a big difference in, like, yeah, facilities. They were still stands of excellence, were they, at the time? Um, yeah, you were in our league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I must have left the year, maybe, after, uh, before you come then. Because I left at 15. I'm, yeah, you did. You were a year above us, weren't you? Yeah, a year above. And then did you go with 16? I went... You went yeah. second year scholar. Second oh, year so scholar. 17, yeah. 16, 17 would have been, yeah. Yeah. But like that was that was good. Like obviously there was like a few load of scouts was there, like um like a, lot, a few of the lads from Everton. So yeah, I knew yeah. people there. Obviously Dave was there and like the, the group the group was good. Yeah. Um so I just settled in there quick. Like I, I was enjoying it back playing with like back playing every week with yeah. the youth team and that. And then um done got a pro there, done my first year pro there, done a second year pro there, and second year pro was just a bit up the wall because they were just so focused on the first team, like yeah. it's understandable, like because it's so obviously Wiggins, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they, they haven't got the budget to be like focused on this, that, and the other. But obviously their like main goal was to just stay in the Prem, like with Martinez. But they won the FA Cup. Yeah. So like oh, it was a bit like, didn't they? yeah, it was a bit of a mad yeah. one. Like they won the FA Cup, but obviously got relegated the same season. Then they just had a big clear out. Like obviously I got released, and then was just sort of like um, went on trial at Tramia. Was there for like won the whole preseason there, and then obviously never got offered that, and like that was like tough. That was like one of the, one of the toughest like points really and, and yeah. focus. when I left tram yeah didn't really have anything for like a few weeks just sat at home like doing nothing do you think obviously when you're leaving Wigan you're thinking I'm easily going to get started tram yeah so then when you didn't get started you have a bit like no because Wigan I was never with the first team and tram when I went the first team oh, okay that was the first like I'd been on loan at Atkinson didn't work there either yeah. um that was like the first real like pre-season I'd done with the first team and stuff tough like obviously done. I felt it done right to be fair I felt it done all right yeah. but probably 
done right to get a contract, but then obviously when it didn't, it was just sort of like shit. Now what? So obviously I hasn't played any games. Yeah. N- never played like a league game or nothing. Um, and then my old agent. It's mad because he used to do like gates, you know, like like gates, like for, uh, for houses and that. Mm-hmm. That was like his one of his oh, businesses, yeah. yeah. And he done a gate for like one of the fellas at Leicester. Yeah. And then obviously he was a football agent as well. What's his name? Um, my old agent, Chris Postel. That used to be man. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. when I was at Berry, yeah. yeah. Lovely guy, really. Yeah, yeah, he was sound. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I really got on with him and that. Did you have your gates done by him or something? Because that must <laughs> I didn't have my gates done by him, no, but he, he was very, very nice. Yeah. Very nice person. Yeah. Um, whether, whether I'd trust him going in and negotiating a contract for me, yeah. thinking about it now, probably not, because he was that nice. Do you know what I mean? As an mm-hmm. agent, you need a little bit of pushback, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I thought that about him. Yeah. It's, it's about the connections in this, I yeah. suppose. I don't know whether he had enough connections, but obviously- How can you be too nice though, can I ask? You can't be too nice as a person generally, yeah. but in business situations, you need a little bit of mm-hmm. something, yeah. like a little bit of fire about you to kind of, like when you got told by the, the chairman, uh, Shrewsby, that oh, you're not getting that out, you just took it, didn't you? So, took it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no <laughs> fight back there. But, no, I just want to stay with But that's fine, because you're a player, yeah. but as an agent, yeah. there needs to be that, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, yeah, like you said, good guy and everything, but he got me in at Leicester and then obviously I was there trialing and then I signed and then from there it's probably where it kicked on. Where did you go after that? After I got a few loans, got a few loans to Northampton, done all right, Chris Wilder was the gaffer and that, so um, he liked me. Went back, done, well, done my ACL there and then went back the next year after I was back fit and that. Um, but then that was like back, back in the league then and obviously Leicester on the Prem and then at the end of that season got you, released. You must have been Martin. feeling elated though, going from not getting signed from Tramia to a trial at Leicester. And then obviously the, their facilities are really nice, aren't they? Yeah. Like when you're gone in there, you, you're thinking, right, I'm back where I belong a little bit. Yeah. This is yeah. what where I want to be. And did they give you that like extra fire to push on a little bit or? Yeah, definitely did. Because the few weeks that I was just sort of like doing nothing, I was a little bit like, you know, starting to think like what I'm going to do. Mm. Um, so obviously like then it was more of like an appreciation to be back playing. Mm. Probably gave me a bit of a kick up the arse really. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Because as you say, it's hard to get back. To, when you go down, it's hard to get back up. But not that he was signed mm-hmm. at Tramia, but... Yeah. It, I mean, you said before about connections in the game. Mm-hmm. The Leicester one, uh, you know, you take that on the chin, don't you? And say that, that's the look you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Someone who's doing yeah, gates, like... Yeah, yeah. Mad. Yeah. But you, you boys have grown up together then. Yeah. And yeah. obviously, as you say, you, you've had a few loans and stuff like that. And your career's going well. Your career's yeah. going well. Um. But you're always having conversations. Obviously, mm. you're working, doing yeah. doing well in your respective job. Your work, you're playing and doing well as well. But you're always having these conversations about doing something together yeah. away from both of the jobs that you're doing. Yeah. What was like? What was the trigger that ignited it? We we used to like obviously always dress the same, and then we said like we seen like a few different brands like sort of doing stuff that we liked. You know what I mean? And we were thinking we could do that. We could put like the the outfits together and things. So you were away at the time we were mm. talking about it. So you were saying. It's hard if you're away to sort of build something. Um, so the minute you sort of like got back, got back around ours, um, living living close, like we, we sort of said, right, this is the time. Like, let's find a manufacturer. Let's let's like build something. Was it always just a clothing line or did you have little ideas? Anything else? It was always clothing money. But we talked yeah. about property and stuff. Yeah, like that, yeah. But... We, we spoke about doing like clothing like years before. Obviously, it, it wasn't going to work because I was playing yeah. for it, so. Obviously, just so hands on, like it's every day in it, like you need to be on it. Like, so when I come back and sign with Trammy, it was like ideal. Mm-hmm. Was that part of your decision then, right? Or was it? Or... <sighs> yeah, I'd say it was probably not not fully, obviously. Like, yeah. it was just the clubs that were like coming up that wanted to sign me at the time, weighing everything up. I was probably thinking, like, we had a good team at Trammy as well. We had a proper team like, yeah. at that time. So I thought, like, we've got a chance of going up here. Obviously you're killing a few birds with one stone as well, aren't you? Coming back yeah. home, you come yeah. back home, you're playing for a good club, yeah, and then you're getting a chance to do the club yeah, well. on the side, which obviously I'm be around you, mate. Yeah, so obviously that was like a, it was it was a, a factor, yeah. yeah. It was a factor. You know, before you said um, you're always dressed the same, or not? Mm. Who copies you then? <laughs> you, know the what? you know what? Do you know what? Like um, a couple of months ago, like I think we were going out for something to eat, and I swear to God, I, put, I pulled up at his and like something that we've both never worn before. It was, yeah. We had the same outfit on. Like really? he had to go yeah. in and get changed. You know what I mean? Like that. That's yeah. like what we're talking about. But you just went out was it your own brand? Nah. Uh, uh, I think back then it probably wasn't. Was nah, it when nah, we were doing it? Nah, but, it wasn't though. But yeah, like like that. It's, it's just it's never really a copying thing. It's just a dress sense, isn't it? You yeah. have a bit of a sense, like. Mm. 
Um, so that's where it sort of came from. Fashion obviously always changes all the time. And yeah. Before we started, uh, you said to me about, you remember me and Zanti. Yeah. And obviously, I must have been about, what, 17? Probably 17, yeah, 18? We were 17, 18, 18, 18, 18 yeah, at the time. Yeah, yeah. I've always been hammered to my fashion. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know why. Obviously, I'm from Eighton. I've always dressed like I'm not from Eighton. Yeah. So, yeah, I was living in Shrewsbury and my mates were wearing different clothes. So, in Zanti, I was probably wearing vests. Yeah. And if I was putting pictures up on social media in a vest, I would yeah. get hammered for weeks. <laughs> You have the pulse as well, and the uh, yeah, the vest only, that, yeah, always that as well, yeah. <laughs> but um, I was always wearing the snapback as well. I spoke about yeah, Marvin Morgan, yeah. um, fresh ego kid. He was just starting to shoot, and he was starting his clothing line as well. Mm. It was all vests, yeah, snapbacks. So he was getting me wearing them. So I was just rolling with it, yeah. I wearing it, yeah. But I took a lot of shit for it. Like it's it's different though, isn't it? Like you say, like where you come from. If you if you can like if you dress a little bit different, it, it's a good thing for you, isn't it? Like you yeah. know, sort of like following the crowd and things like that. So well you say that, but my first date with my wife now, uh, I turned up in I think purple chinos. Yeah. Purple chinos, a grey hoodie, night blazer high tops. I think they were silver or something like that. And a sleeveless denim jacket. Yeah. <laughs> and a snapback, obviously. I hope this wasn't like last year or something. No, this was about ago, yeah. yeah, twelve years ago, thirteen <laughs> years ago. And um Obviously, at the time, she remember like thinking, like, I'm not sure about this lad, mm. because as you will <laughs> yeah. probably know, girls onto the fashion, aren't they? Judge you like she, thought, away, like, she weren't gonna oh, get me because she it. thought I was a wool lad, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know whether you can resonate with that. <laughs> oh, 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 he's a all over the water, but yeah, that was a big factor. Luckily, yeah. she managed to stay with me. But yeah, might have nearly fucked me off after the first day because me clothing. <laughs> Still yeah. got the outfits or was yeah, it? Yeah, still wearing it now yeah. and again. I come up with the rascals now and again. Like, <laughs> but now she also. takes over. She she dresses me all the time. I don't get a choice yeah. now. Yeah. This podcast is sponsored by Blythe House. Financial advisors for high net worth individuals and business owners. If you're looking for advice in pensions, investments, mortgages, inheritance, tax planning, life cover, business loans and asset finance, then Blythe House has the expertise for you. Head over to the show notes on whatever platform you're listening to this on to find out more. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like and follow the page. Thank you. So you, so at this time, obviously you've signed for Tramia yeah. and your project managing at the time. Uh, yeah, project manager. Yeah, your project managing yeah, at yeah. the time. You said right, this is the, the right time to, to go for the brand. Uh, Le do so. I don't yeah. want to mispronounce it. Yeah, 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 yeah Le do so. Yeah. Where did the name come from? Where did the, <clears throat> like what what? Because I I've been there many times thinking of like business names and stuff like that, and you yeah. dwell over it for a long time, don't you? Yeah. Did you have like, plenty of conversations about how you want the brand to go? Because I, I think we had the conversation, right, where you said it was a little bit more active word as well. Yeah. Um, did you have these conversations about like, like maybe let's, let's do a business plan and see how we, or was it just like, find someone, let's go and do it? I think we were back and forth a bit, weren't we, obviously? Yeah. We wanted something that sounded a bit like fancy rather than um, just like a couple of words of like, a, like English words. And, and that sort of meant like, like active, didn't it? And like, yeah. was it Latin? Yeah. And then, because like you said, we, we were starting with active wear because be, just before we started, we were like, obviously everyone wears Nike gear and stuff like that. Even when you go in town shopping, it's expensive, isn't it? Like, mm. It's like, what, 60 odd quid for a pair of pants. So we were saying like, why can't we, why can't we just make these? You know what I mean? So that's why we started with the active wear, like the day-to-day -day wear. And then obviously we, we sort of branched out a bit. But but yeah, that, that's where the name come from. We wanted it sort of sounded a bit fancy, but still meaningful and still mm -hmm. had, had the sort of active meaning, if you like. Yeah. And did, so from that point you've got your name now hmm. how do you go about starting a brand for like for anyone who's interested how do you go about starting a brand you're supposed to smile here yeah? no, no, it's, it's, no it's, listen but by the way don't hold any like you know things that because it's no. all part of the journey isn't it do you yeah, know? Yeah, it's yeah. not going to all be a that, that's the thing i think we get like obviously quite a lot of like messages and dms saying like oh uh, what what's your manufacturing stuff like that and i don't think people realize how long that all takes at the start before you've even got something in your hand to like get someone to even reply to you, like an email, like a manufacturer, like at the start, you don't even know what you're talking about as well, really. Like if yeah. you haven't done it previously, like what you, when you're cold emailing people, you sort of, you need to bulk it out and sound like you, you, you know what you, like you're doing or, yeah, yeah. because they'll just, they'll turn around and go, there's another one here. Like, yeah, yeah. like we're not working with yeah, you. But like you say, like the, the, the six months probably from like saying like you're going to start it to like planning to like actually physically getting something in front of you. It's like samples, is it? So like samples yeah, and yeah. stuff, like it's a lot of work and you learn a lot in that period as well. Do you know what I mean? So like when people ask us like, what's this? It's like, it's not like you're gatekeeping like ideas or information. It's sort of like, it's, it's like telling people like, if you go and do that, you'll learn a lot about your brand and where you want to go and like 
the people you want to work with and manufacturers and stuff like that. So, so that's, it starts with sort of like cold email and, and, and getting stuff out. And then obviously with the likes of Ryan's connections and that's get, getting it to people as well who, who are going to work in big profiles and things yeah. like that. And obviously the earlier days, you are both working at the, at the time as well. Uh, so how did you find that doing both at the same time? Well, you, you obviously like putty your own earlier and stuff like that than, than myself, but it's tough. Like it, chaos, it was tough. It? Yeah. It, Absolute it, it, chaos. Like we were doing drop days and that, like we were obviously just working out of like his house, my house, like the houses were just full of boxes, just like constantly. Like, and obviously it's mad. It's just, it's just, mad. but it's good. That's like, obviously it's like, like, yeah. he's, like mm. he's saying, it's part of the journey, isn't it? Like looking back now, like it's exciting, like it's growing. Like yeah. when, when the orders are coming in and we're like, they're packing them physically. Everything's just in yeah. the house, and it's you always just... see the, the stories of Gymshark, don't you? Yeah, From yeah. early days, and that's what it's like. Where they're like packing in the house and the, the, the printing it themselves. Yeah. Are you gonna say that you used to wear this Gymshark vest? Are you no, I used to wear <laughs> Gymshark vest, but just on the exciting thing and all that. I remember Marvin launched um, one day, and we were in Nando's, and he clicked like the launch time was at the time we were about to start our Nando's and stuff like that. Mm. Next minute, his phone was just making a noise. It mm. was like a the Shopify noise or noise. something like that, yeah. Yeah. and he just knew it was an order. And every time, he, and it was just going boom, boom, boom yeah. all the time. And he just kept on smiling every time. So you, and it must be exciting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's possible. Obviously, it's like we've created that. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, it's stuff that we we think like will people like it, and then obviously when when they do, obviously like it's a, it's a good feeling. Yeah. Like nice, yeah. yeah. So so is it is he hosting on like Shopify or something like that? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's everyone's part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's the easiest yeah. way to do it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously, again, you're probably having to find out and navigate that as well. Plenty, yeah. of, plenty of research and stuff like that, trying to find out. That's in there's a lot, a lot in it as well. Like, there's there's a lot of different factors, and you talking, you then start talking about ad advertising and things like that. And then we we had someone on board with us, like a marketing agent, who was who was amazing. He was he was classy, like taught us quite a lot. Uh, he's obviously not working with us now because we sort of said like, let's just bring everything just 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 us and like make everything how we want it because then it's, it's your physically your story then do you know what i mean um and it, it's just gone from strength to strength to strength equally you've got ryan who's obviously still in the game and it, it. It, it appeals to a lot of footballers so there's yeah. there's a market employee straight away isn't it yeah of course yeah i think we spoke about the other day like obviously you said like we're more more and getting to play isn't that like it's just like, like people People see them and they want what they've got on. Like it's just how, how it sort of works, isn't it? Like people see what 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 your players have got on, and you look at that, and then obviously the higher profile, like obviously the bigger the audience and stuff. So it's obviously tough trying to get like people in it and stuff. And but like now, like the, the brands at a point where they're, they're buying it, you know what I mean? And like we don't need to really like push it too much. Yeah. Like obviously it's mm. it's just got to a point now where people are buying it, and then obviously they're just they're getting seen in it. And obviously if we if we like obviously see it on the social medias and things like that, like. We, we post it and then obviously it gets like another big like attraction and another big audience and yeah it's good just obviously like it's day to day it's comfy stuff yeah. like what like you can't really go wrong to be honest well how do you move with the times then because obviously we spoke about it the other day um jeans years ago were like the tightest jeans everyone yeah. wants to wear the skinniest jeans now t-shirts are going a little bit more oversized not for most scouts like this they'll probably wear tight tops and all that but obviously i'm i'm one of them that wears an oversized <laughs> <laughs> so how do you move with the, the times and how do you like think about what could be next and try and beat someone else who's going to start something? That's a good point. Like, it's tough. Um, Cause no one knows what could come yeah, back. Yeah, in yeah. That's what, what when um, you see all the, all the TikToks of like people going around on the streets, like videoing people. And I think someone done one of Reese Barra who owns that money. Yeah. And he said the hardest thing is like keeping up with trends. Cause like you can't, you can't be asleep for like, a, you know, like a day, like someone like it changes like constantly fashion as you know, so like, the likes of us like going even just like when we go out to manchester like shopping like to end and stuff like that you're constantly looking at things of how our brands are doing stuff do you know what i mean the thing is as well because of it sean it, to keep up with trends is mm -hmm. one thing but to predict trends as well yeah because obviously you're yeah. getting ready prior yeah, yeah, to the yeah. summer because you need all your, your stuff coming in don't yeah, you yeah so everyone's gonna wear everyone's gonna want yeah but that that's the bigger brand stuff i think as well is like once someone goes like everyone sort of like follows type of thing now it if you've got like a bit of a niche product and something like that, then that's when you're really going to take off and that's what every brand wants. But um, there's a lot of similarities. It's just, it's just putting your own spin on it, I take it, isn't it? Like like we do like a lot of like combats and stuff like other brands, but we have, you know, you change the drawstring or you change the pocket type or where stuff are. So it's sort of like keeping in line. You've got to always sort of keep in line with the fashion. Yeah. But it obviously changes quite a lot. Everyone takes inspiration from each other, don't they? De definitely. You know what I mean? It's like obviously, every industry, yeah. 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 Like the likes of Zara. You yeah, know, or like there's these dupes these days, isn't there? Yeah, obviously yeah. The, the the luxury brands, and then it filters down a little yeah, bit, doesn't it? So yeah. 
it, yeah, no, it's 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 a funny, um, it's a revolving world, isn't it? Definitely, Fashion, so. definitely yeah. Do you do track suits, t-shirts, combats? Mm. And then I've just seen that you're uh, going to launch swimming shorts as well. Yeah, we've, got, them. We've, got, yeah we've got a few new products coming, like... Um, so we haven't really done a proper summer job, have we? We, no. we released some bits like last year, but this year like we've, we've gone for it a bit more like with the with a proper release, like planning yeah. ahead, innit? Like, yeah, like summer, we, yeah. We properly planned ahead with this one. You say you should always be like one or two sort of seasons ahead, you know, with your planning and things, so everything's ready and prepared. And we're sort of we're a couple of years in now, so it's like it's serious, you know, like I'm full time with it, so it's like like we're, we're we're on the ball like properly with it with the releases and stuff. So just know? just on obviously while you're doing all that, I know I spoke to you about it. But how were you finding it and does it make your football career a bit easier knowing that you've got a plan after football? I know you're still only 30, but obviously with injuries, like we said, you never know when it could, mm. could end. And obviously with you starting this, does do you feel a little bit more relaxed in your football career? Yeah, a little bit, I suppose. Obviously, like like I said, like I, I feel like I'm more, I, I sort of just live in the moment anyway, so I'm not like a, a massive overthinker, like thinking about like the next five years too much and whatever, but... It's definitely like obviously the brand something like that I love. Do you know what I mean? Like it's something that like like unless you're staying in football, like there's probably not much else you'd you'd want to really do. Like I don't really want to go and work in an office or like do something like that. Um. So yeah, it does take a little bit off the um of the stress almost of you know like trying to trying to plan for after football because obviously the the more the brand grow, grows, I can just like go into that when when I'm ready to. And have you finish. had any negativity from managers or players or anything like that because you've got something on the sideline and not just focusing fully on football or have people been supportive with it? Really supportive. Yeah, like everyone, to be fair. Like um I've pretty much been at Salford the whole time to be to be honest. And like obviously everyone at the club knows what to do, like on the side and the boys always like, you know, buy stuff and yeah. support the brand, they wear the clothes, like whatever. Um but yeah, it's been uh, obviously even even Gary, Gary Neville's had had the clothes on and that like but like he's a, he's a, he's a businessman as well. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like he's he's not soft. Like obviously, no. like things, all the things are going on in the yeah. world. Like you know, like to to to, to uh, on the side. So yeah, the club's been been great, and the boys have been it's great. like a mini like, influencer. Him, he's always wearing someone's brand. Him, yeah. I'm sure I seen him with represent on the other day for yeah, the, he oh, loves it, yeah. it. his local brand as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but he's just on the ball with everything, and yeah. he? like he's just non-stop. And I think he he probably would encourage the lads say to, that, yeah. to start up and yeah. do other things because. You know, there's no one better probably at the minute. Yeah. Though. Well, I think um, me and my place director when he said that the owners come in in pre-season said like, if you want any help with setting up, or set, setting up any businesses on the side, we'll help you start off and all that. So, mm. like obviously owners like them, owners like Gary, who understands football, being in football, knows that um, football, especially at the lower levels, need to start planning for the future, and it'll probably help their careers as well. So having mm. someone like him who's yeah. in charge obviously helps that journey for you. Yeah, definitely. And Sean, obviously on you. Mm. You've quit your job now to go full time yeah. with Lado. So, yeah. um, talk us through why you had to do that, and obviously, um, yeah. I, I, well, it was probably it was probably a long time coming, really, because we could, we could have done it like a, a lot sooner. But I think you always have that sort of nervousness, don't you? You know, I've got myself to like a point there where I like, can working for a, like an amazing company. Like I've built myself up where like a lot of people would have like stayed at a level, maybe. Um, but. Obviously, it was just getting too much. Like, your, your spare time, like, gets taken up quite a lot. So, obviously, we waited till, like, financially it was right. And and then, as I say, it, it was getting that much with the likes of the, the orders and, and, and what the admin side of things that it just came to a point where it was like, this is this has just got to happen now. Like, didn't have a choice. And obviously, it's a, it's a good choice, but it, it's got to be right. Like, I think a lot of people, sort of, I don't know what, the like, the um, percentages of, of business that start and, like, fail in the first however many years, but... You could probably get eager where you start making a little bit of money and you think, oh, that that's more than my wage there. Like the bit, but it's not actually like just me making that. It's the business that like you've got outgoings and stuff. So it just had to be right, and it, it had to be like after a certain amount of time. Obviously, the, the build up and, and and we know obviously like the, the sales are going to keep coming in no matter what. So that that's when it felt right. The good thing for you is though, Sean, you've got a skill. Yeah. So you can, you know, providing all things don't go as well as you want. Yeah. Like obviously, you would love it to. Um, you can fall back on that because because you, you've got you've already got the skill you've acquired it haven't you so yeah, but did you feel it. like that skill has helped you because obviously project managing yeah does do you feel like that's helped you with the brand a little bit or yeah definitely and obviously the, the sort of commercial like sort of side of things that was in like I, I was still learning I was learning a lot about numbers and things like that which I, I didn't know about and everything that I've done sort of leading up to the sort of going full time has definitely helped 
you know what I mean? Even the company that I work for, the, the two directors were like, like quite young, like the youngest directors I've worked for. And it's just like, it's inspiration. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, that's where I, that's where I want to be. And that, that sort of made me the decision as well. A lot easier. Any um, notable mistakes then that you've made a part of this journey that, you know, where you can look back and go, won't do that again. I'd say there's, there's some products that we could be like. Yeah, that. not everything works. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Not everything sells. Like, obviously yeah. some things do better than others. That's just like life, isn't it? Um, mm. Obviously sometimes maybe we order a bit too much of one thing and um, it's organization as well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's obviously like we, sometimes we like, um, not that we rush it, like, but sometimes it's, it's excitement, isn't it? Yeah. Probably to yeah. Get but to like maybe a bit too eager to like show it and then, but like we're not building no anticipation for yeah. it. Like it's just sort of like, oh, like get that on, get that sold. But like, there's sometimes people miss it and do you know what I mean? Don't see it as much. And we've learned we've learned a lot over the couple of years of what we should and shouldn't be doing. Like obviously, but the likes of well, it, it's it's having a lot of trust in things as well. It's like that your manufacturers and stuff like that. Like luckily we we got like got in early with a good manufacturer, but like some people don't. And then you're parting you're parting like a lot of money to like these manufacturers. You know what I mean? Like you're putting a lot of risk and like like well, well our own money mm. at the start wasn't it yeah. and you sort of you've got to make sure like those sorts of things are right and you've got that trust because once that money's gone and they send you what they're sending you the products like could come and could be wrong like and they'll say like well, it, well i don't know is it it's not our fault or send it back and then you've got customers waiting for stuff so i think timing and an organization is probably sort of yeah one like of the biggest before, lessons the summer drop, like at the start we were probably leaving things a bit late like probably even mm. up until like last summer like you know, with the what we wanted to release, mm. it was like last minute. Everything was just like rushed through, rather than like this. This summer's been like wow. six months, like planned. You know what I mean? And it's a yeah. bit more like more organization, just getting everything. It's like processes, processes a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it just used to, or have you just got other people working for you? No, it, it is just us two. Obviously, like um, as I said, we had the the marketing agent, but we have spoke about like the the, the staff side of things and um. It's something that again we, we're not gonna have a choice. Like the the sort of drop days, like we say, it, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah, it's chaos. Like, <laughs> like, it, Honestly, like it's it's mad. Try and drop it on a Wednesday when you're off footy, is it? <laughs> yeah, we we normally go Sundays. Like, Sunday. yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just the uh, the whole weekend is just like you don't see us. Sunny, like, you know, roasting and your phone's just pinging like, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, just keep on it down for the week. Like. You yeah. said before, Sorry, Sean, about obviously you both put your own money in originally. I think Reese's. As you say, Reese Robard has documented yeah. how much his initial investment was for Manier. Um, was it a huge amount of money that he's put in or was it like something that like, for example, if someone was watching, they could just potentially mm. plow together and then go and uh, have a go themselves? Yeah, I mean... You don't have to talk about figures if you don't want to. No, but no, it's, it's, it's yeah. no secret. Like, I think we put it was about 10 grand each, something like yeah, that yeah, at the start yeah. and then we filtered yeah. a little bit, little bit more to sort of progress from there. So yeah, you're talking like 20 grand, but who's to say someone can't like, do less and do a little bit less products at the start. There's probably no right or wrong answer. Like, as you say, like Reese Babar and all them, they, they talk about like the figures that they started with. And I know on, on like, like talk a bit about how much like them two put in at the start. And I mean, it's massive amounts of people, the massive amounts of money to like a, a, a lot of people, but risk and reward at the end of the day, isn't it? What are the big plans for the Lu do so? Well, getting it on everyone's back is probably the, uh, the main one, isn't it? Yeah, well, obviously, just like, but like we were saying on the way in, like when when you see someone in it that you don't know, just like randomly, Made up. Yeah. just mad. The feelings, mad, you know, like it's like obviously they're like sort of trusting you mm. to like like produce like clothes that they want to wear, and like obviously when when they're getting the product and that, like, and then they they're obviously putting it on and wearing it out and that. It's just it's obviously mad in it because like it's just coming from me and him. Mm. Like we bagged that order and you see him yeah. in it and he's like he sort of yeah because we're like there. so hands on with the business. You know what I mean? Like we literally do everything. Yeah. So like from that coming into us, us bagging it, packing it, sending it off, and he's got it on, or whoever's got it on, it's like, yeah, feelings, feelings good. Yeah. So obviously, just trying to like scale it, like the as big as possible, really, and then mm. just see where it can see where it can obviously take us. I mean, like we we were talking on the way in about goals and stuff like that, and if you if you have like too many goals, like we were saying of where you want the brand to go and stuff, once you get to your goal, like you're constantly setting another one. So like, are you enjoying getting to that goal? Yeah. So like you can have, we can just have fun with it, can't we? Well, yeah. have fun like and make sure like it's constantly growing and we're enjoying what what we're doing because we love fashion. At the end of the day, we're, we're lucky to be in like an industry where like we, we love like like put, what we put on and like making that stuff. So less so, pressure yeah. then, less pressure to achieve those goals because you're doing it out of a passion. Well, isn't that, it? that's it. Yeah, like if you say to if you say oh this is the one year goal and then you don't get there, what well, what are you are you sad then? 
yeah. or if you get there and then you set another goal like that goal that you've just like got to have you enjoyed getting to that goal are you constantly chasing something more are you, are you getting to like retirements and thinking did we celebrate any of those achievements that we got to that's one thing we speak about don't we with footy players or uh, athletes we've had on have they enjoyed the pro the, the, yeah. the, the journey uh do you feel like that user immersed in it now and you can obviously as you say you see people with it on and, and you'll you know you get a good feeling about it. Yeah. Do you feel like you're enjoying the, the process and the journey that you're going through together? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Obviously, like he's, he's my best mate. Do you know what I mean? Like with like growing up with him, like it's it's mad. Like mm. to be doing something like together and like going out and, and and seeing it and people with it on. Like the process is is the best bit. Oh, um, how, how many people get to work with the best mate or or own a business with the best mate? Like you, you used to obviously doing it now. Good mates. Like quite fulfilling, isn't it? Like to be able to just just. Go it's a controversial one, isn't it? Because people Top say mate, <laughs> it's a controversial one because people say like not to not to um sometimes go into business with, yeah. with yeah. friends and family and stuff like that. But obviously, yeah, yeah. as you say, user mm. enjoying it. Do you ever butt heads and go right? Well, let's look at it as a, from a logical point of view, or is it kind of the passion from a friendship point of view? Who's the fucking boss? Yeah. <laughs> now nah, we have different roles. Obviously, we have different yeah. roles, but I don't. That that's probably what it's a little bit mad to me because I don't think we do butt heads on like no, decisions. No, really, no. That's what me like with, with that I like with like what we're doing and like the fashion sense and stuff. It's like uh, if he says to me like I think that'll work and I'll, I'll I'm literally like yeah that'll work or vice versa if I say to him like I think this fit will look good or these colorways or or, or whatever yeah, like details like he'll say yeah that that looks sick do you know what I mean so it can work both ways like you say like you can obviously clash and if you end up falling out with your best mates like it's devastating isn't it you know what I mean if you're, yeah you're, I think because we both want, want the same thing in terms yeah. of like. Well, anything that, that we do is to help grow the business. You know what I mean? I don't feel like. So if 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 Sean says something, you know, it's not coming out of anything other than trying to grow the yeah, business. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like and it's trusting it. Like, like obviously, I trust him to 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 do what he's doing, and and obviously be the best at it. So, just like obviously to to uh, balance in it. Yeah. We, that's what that's the best way to sort of. Have. If you need any models, balance. lad. Andrew used to model. <laughs> no, not me. I'm too small. But no, Andrew we're used to model. We're having a model. Did, yeah. No, yeah. did you used to model? Yeah, yeah. When did I was you, uh, yeah. when I was playing up north and. Kate said, uh, you know, when you, you get them obligations from the club to, to go and do stuff for the, mm, for the club, yeah. this time it was to go and model for... We do actually speak about it, like, like yeah. doing things like that. Spe yeah, like it was to, yeah, it was to, to model for something like the Trafford Centre. Yeah, They had something up there in Newcastle. Mm. And um, I was sat there with two other players and these models were getting paid and I was thinking, you aren't getting paid money for this. Yeah, he looked like he was having the best time ever. Like obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of models who were in the game. Obviously, once you're in it, you realize it's not everything is cut out to be because yeah. there's a lot of competition and a lot of yeah. castings and stuff like that. But actually, getting paid to stand in in front of a camera was bizarre to yeah, me. So I, I said to the woman, I said, "Well, did it, like," you, and she was the model booking uh, booking, and she was like, "Oh, you've got a good look actually." And then ne <laughs> next thing, and then next thing, she yeah, she took me. Yes, yeah, so I ended up modeling for a, for a company up there. Funnily enough, I only started getting loads of work when I left Gateshead. Yeah. <laughs> so it would have been ideal if it was yeah. getting it when I was living up there. But um, now I've done that for a while, but end up smashing my face open. And oh, that, that put me. Help you cause, did it? No, it didn't. But now, <laughs> now I'm a model with a scar, actually. But. Take it. <laughs> but speaking on uh, good luck and fashion, I just want to touch on Andre's fashion attire today. <laughs> we were having it, we said. This is yeah. what, what, yeah. what are your sports on it? Nah, Small. Like it. Like yeah. It. Yeah. He's gone for like um, a school trouser, teacher, pants. Mm. <laughs> kind of black sock like yeah. Asics, yeah. you like the Asics but then yeah. what about the, dad the grand dad Card cardigan the Cardis, the Cardis are in yeah. mature yeah, John, once you yeah. become a dad you'll understand it's the mature <laughs> no, look do you know what I mean no, because <laughs> he's got a good fashion sense yeah. as, in terms of like thank you no thank well you. I'm saying good the type of thing that like you're saying like it's, it's comfy in it like yeah don't always want to throw like just skinny jeans on that like yeah. do you know and my legs are far too skinny for skinny jeans I'll be honest but I'm the same yeah I'm going to ask a controversial question right because you said when you see someone um wearing a t-shirt for that like you don't know you get mm. a good feeling out of it do you get a better feeling out of that or i seeing watson on the back of someone's shirt the, the watson shirt doesn't happen very often <laughs> 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 yeah, probably i don't know it's hard isn't it like a different um football stuff's obviously something that like i've grew up I've, it's my life you know what i mean like with, with with family and that but like this now is like something that like it's it's all new to, to me and, yeah. and obviously sean we've never it's everything that we do like still like on the day to day, like is relatively new. Do you know what I mean? So that's where like the excitement comes. So if we can just keep keep on it with that. Like, I think like it, it's, it can only be a positive for the business, and it's only going to go one way. Um, obviously, I still love the football. Like that's that's my main passion. Like, like still, um, 
But yeah, I don't know. Obviously, it's a, it's a tough question. Like, no know. answer then. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. On the fence on that. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no. I know what you'd say, Joe. <laughs> Would you rather score a goal or sell out all your t-shirts in one day? <laughs> oh, they're getting harder. No. Yeah, Gary Neville's not watching it, don't worry. Yeah. Oh, you never know. I'll send it to him. I don't know. It's a different feeling, isn't it? Like, You've got to be scoring. Like, yeah, scoring, yeah. Is it, yeah? You think so, yeah. Yeah. When you sell out a day, when you, when, <laughs> hey, when you, when, yeah, it is, yeah. When you sell out a six-figure day, you maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe ask them that question then, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah. what, where, where can, um, where can our audience find the brand then? Where, where's the best place to see, to see your stuff? The Instagram, obviously, the, the, the main source. Yeah, you can see obviously all, all the outfits and that, and then you, we've got our links on there to the, to the website. Um, it's locked at the minute because obviously we're doing a, a limited drop on Sunday. I'm getting that. Yeah, the day. Yeah. yeah this, are you, are you both in the do so. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, like, Sunday, like it's it's something new again. We haven't yeah. done this sort of like t-shirt, this sort of product before, so because um, we're quite min- minimalistic, aren't we? Like yeah. with designs and stuff, like up until this point, and then this is a big one. Like it's got our name or, or like on the back of it. So, do you know what I mean? If you, if if someone's out in it, like you can see it's ours rather than looking and seeing is, is that our track? In it's fairness, playing. it shows you you're doing something well because people are buying into the brand without mm, exactly, any yeah. an, any logo any really. On it, yeah. They're buying into obviously yeah. the, the the quality you mm. guys as well as people. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't see the logo being too much of an issue. No, oh, well, when I seen her, that was the one I wanted the most, to be honest with you. Yeah. I seen her, I was like, I want that. A board, a board, yeah. <laughs> a board drop. No, Ellie, Ellie liked it, so I'm all right. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah no, all right. Yeah. His wife liked it. That's yeah. Yeah. liked it, so I'm all right, yeah. Get away with it. Yeah, Did she choose, like, yeah. choose it for you? Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> I don't get to choose Go with it then. She's, she's, she's fashionable. It, yeah, yeah, she's she's fashionable. Honestly, it's, it's, it's mad, you know, like, I'm getting the train to London tonight. And she was trying to tell me what to wear to get the train. <laughs> and then going into surgery tomorrow, what I'm wearing is going to surgery and all that. Like, it's mad. What, I can't she, just... what she got you in? She said a tracky in the end, like, but yeah. I was like, same. I was going to wear the same clothes. I was going to wear the same when I was going in tonight and then just wear it tomorrow. So like, you can't do that. I was like, why can't I? I'm getting the train, going to go to sleep and then just going to go to hospital the next day. <laughs> can't do that. wear the same, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Easy, but yeah. I know. Now you have to take a, a bigger bag and all that. But... Who's some of the most notable people? That are wearing your stuff at the moment, then. Um, Name drops. McTominay, Scott McTominay. He's uh, he he was asking for a tracksuit last week. Um, just talking about the size and then that. Um, there's a few that like like we said before, like started where obviously Ryan was like we're trying to connect and get get it to people, but then as you say now, like we're going on like footballers fit, you know, like the the page yeah. that's got like six hundred thousand followers and that. And like I was just scrolling and. Rico Henry was just on there, like oh, yeah. Brentford, like coming into training, he had the hoodie on. Yeah. But mm-hmm. he, he bought he bought that like off us, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like randomly. And they like to like obviously like Holgate was like at his like Southampton sign and in the track he like that he bought. Played it played at Mason at it, yeah. apparently. Yeah, so like he, yeah. He, the people are just like sort of like recognizing it to, to like buy it rather mm-hmm. than like you getting a message saying like like do you wanna like sort of feature on the page or be be in the in the clothes? But like you say, like the McTominay yeah. and now we've had obviously Ivan Tony and stuff. Only dogs like that. obviously like even like all the boys are still always just asking for freebies, yeah. asking for this and that. Like yeah. obviously, it's obviously like um, the Leicester lot. Like they're all yeah. obviously in a big, big and money. Aren't they? Like they're all yeah. massive money, and they're all asking for freebies and that. But that's what happens, mate. Yeah. The, the yeah. more they make, the, the more they get yeah, for free. To be honest with you, but yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. It's just, yeah, it is good. good. Yeah, it's obviously, it shows they want they actually want yeah. the stuff. Do you know what I mean? Just on that though, as mate, yeah, if you want to support your friends, buy the stuff. Don't ask for freebies. <laughs> need to say that. Good point, because John. Good, good point. Yeah, I need yeah. to point that out there because you're a better mate when you support your mate and buy it. Not asking for freebies all the time. Yeah, that is important. Nah, that's what I said before. Like the lads have been, the lads have yeah. been great. Like everyone that has has bought and do you know what I mean. But it's just funny, like when some of them are all just asking. But like now, nah, like everyone's been really supportive and like when when you see them on it, and like like you said, there you just come like stumble across pictures and that like of like the prem players and that in it. Like that. That's obviously good yeah, good room. Yeah. Next stop for the so, uh, collab with Salford, like uh, off white, like like off white with uh, AC yeah, yeah. Milan. Yeah, yeah. imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, the, the travel gear. They're like a few of the boys have said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like some some like the yeah. League Two stuff, like the uh, it's like the snap stuff, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah no. Or, like, even like with the like the Adidas stuff and that, like yeah. it's not always like the the premium stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the Arsenal stuff, it's always like the snide stuff. Yeah, all the stripes. Yeah, the whole, <laughs> yeah all, all everything's like hanging off the off the shape, but. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe no, we'll I'm do. looking forward to uh, seeing the brand grow. Obviously, it is you're doing really good stuff, and as John said, we're going to be supporting as well as uh, 
ch- cheering you on and championing yeah. you on. So yeah, no, good luck to you, boys. Um, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, appreciate it. Cheers, lads. Thank you very much.